I'm Kevin Love, and welcome to West Wing Week. Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. This week, the president convened summits on global public health and on the Brain Initiative, hosted the prime ministers of India and Israel, welcomed the 2013 MLS champion sporting Kansas City to the White House, and traveled to Chicago to speak on the resurgence of the American economy. That's September 26th to October 2nd, or if the body is strong. If the body is strong. If communities are strong, if nations are strong, then their immune systems are a little bit stronger. On Friday, the president emphasized the need for all nations to prioritize public health in light of the Ebola epidemic in West Africa. We have to change our mindsets and start thinking about biological threats as the security threats that they are, in addition to being humanitarian threats and economic threats. We have to bring the same level of commitment and focus to these challenges as we do when meeting around more traditional security issues. Later, the president sat down with Steve Croft at 60 Minutes and spoke on America's role as the world's indispensable nation. When trouble comes up anywhere in the world, they don't call Beijing, they don't call Moscow, they call us. And that's how we roll. Saturday night, the president and first lady donned their formal wear for the 44th annual Congressional Black Caucus Foundation's Phoenix Award Dinner. Cynicism is very popular in America sometimes. It's propagated in the media. But cynicism didn't put anybody on the moon. Cynicism didn't pass a Voting Rights Act. Hope is what packed buses full of freedom riders. Hope's what led thousands of black folks and white folks to march from Selma to Montgomery. Hope's what got John Lewis off his back after being beaten within an inch of his life and chose to keep on going. Cynicism is a choice, but hope is a better choice. On Tuesday, the president invited Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India to the White House for their first summit. Then they ventured out together on a lovely fall Tuesday to make a pilgrimage to one of the newest landmarks in our nation's capital, the memorial to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They pledged to push the bilateral relationship to new levels resolve issues blocking implementation of a civil nuclear deal, and cooperate in counterterrorism. Both leaders committed to a new mantra for their relationship, chale sat sat, forward together we go. In the afternoon, the White House announced new investments in the Brain Initiative, a critical research effort that aims to advance our understanding of the human mind and our ability to treat, prevent, and cure brain disorders. Wednesday, the president met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in the Oval Office. Of course, there is much on the docket to discuss, including relations with the Palestinians and efforts to combat ISIL. Later, the president welcomed the 2013 MLS champion Sporting Kansas City. The Royals advancing, blew out the Patriots the other day. So overall, you, something's going on in Kansas City. You guys got, you got it all started. On Thursday, the president returned to his roots, his hometown of Chicago, to speak to an assembly of students, staff, and faculty at Northwestern's Kellogg School of Management focusing on what has always fueled America's leadership, and that's America's economic greatness. He took a step back from the rush of current events to explain what we've done to recover from the Great Recession and what we need to do to ensure that more middle-class families feel that progress in their own lives. So here's the bottom line. For all the work that remains, for all the citizens that we still need to reach, what I want people to know is that there are some really good things happening in America. That's because this new foundation is now in place. New investments in energy and technologies that create new jobs and new industries. New investments in education that will make our workforce more skilled and competitive. New reforms to health care that cut costs for families and businesses. New reforms to our federal budget that will promote smart investments and stronger, a stronger economy for future generations. New rules for our financial system to protect consumers and prevent the kinds of crises that we endured from happening again. Well, folks, you've gone and done it. You've spent a few minutes with us online. We love it. Keep doing it. Stay engaged with us. And thanks again for checking out this edition of your West Wing Week. If it wasn't black tie, I would have worn my tan suit. I thought it looked good. <laughs>